and welcome to Whitbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. And we're here tonight for the very special occasion of recognizing LGBTQ plus Pride Awareness Month in Woodbridge Township. I'm going to start by reading this proclamation, then I'm going to introduce a few people who are going to speak. What it says, whereas Woodbridge Township recognizes the pursuit of human rights, equality, respect, and inclusion for all citizens, and steadfastly supports an end to all forms of prejudice and discrimination, and that no one should live in fear or endure persecution and or violence arising from sexual orientation or gender identity. And whereas LGBTQ plus individuals have an immeasurable impact on and make vital contributions to our nation and community to include cultural, political, civic, military and economic influences and are committed to promoting equality and fostering a welcoming and supportive environment for all. And whereas while society at large increasingly supports LGBTQ plus equality, it is essential to acknowledge that the need for education and awareness remains vital as the primary vehicle to end the pattern of discrimination, bias and prejudice. And whereas the Office of Mayor and the Municipal Council of the Township of Woodbridge call upon the residents of Woodbridge Township to embrace the LGBTQ plus community and to work together to foster a warm and hospital, hospitable community for all. Now, therefore, I, John McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge, in concert with the Council, do hereby proclaim the month of June in the year 2021 to be LGBTQ plus Pride Month in Woodbridge Township. So congratulations. <laughs> This is the first time we've ever done this. We're very, very proud to do it. It's long overdue. And now let me tell you a little story, a story about a young lady from Colonia uh, who at the time last year was a junior in Colonia High School. And she was, uh, in, is in Girl Scouts and was working to advance the Girl Scout Gold Award. That's the equivalent of Boy Scout Eagle Scout, except that there's way more Boy Scouts that get the Eagle Scout Award than there are girls who get to the Gold Scout Award. I've probably had, I think, six in my 14 plus years uh, as mayor, six Girl Scout Gold Awards. And I'll bet I've had 80 or 90 Eagle Scouts. So this is much harder uh, for girls to achieve. Uh, but Molly Rubin wrote this letter, I guess it was an email, to Brian Molnar in the Recreation Department. And what she said was in that letter, I would like to know if I can work with the town to create a space where uh, LGBTQ plus uh, high school and middle school students can call their own, can have a place to meet, to gather, to recreate, to socialize, uh, and, and just be comfortable. It was so well written. And our recreation director, Brian Molnar, had the good sense to read it and say, wow. He sent it to me, and I read it and said, wow. Uh, in the letter, she asked about the community center, but we really don't have that kind of room in the community center that we can dedicate one specially for not this and nothing else. But at the same time, we were building the uh, Acacia Youth Center over at the Hungarian Club. Uh, we got the Hungarian Club for free way back in the 50s. The town sold them the piece of land for $500. They then built the club. But the town was wise enough to put in the deed, if you ever stop using this as a club, the land reverts back to the township. Well, the time came, like many organizations with elderly uh, members, uh, they had to give up the club, and therefore we got that building, that land back, but not, by now there was a beautiful building on it. So we decided to turn that into uh, the Acacia Youth Center for middle school kids after school and for banquets for our sports teams that always go to the Pines Manor. Now they can come here. Uh, so it's just worked out perfectly that we had two rooms in that um, building upstairs that we had no plans for. Uh, they were the offices for the club, and we put two and two together and said, why don't we bring Molly out, look at this pl place. And she came out, had several visits with us. Uh, she picked out the colors of the carpet, picked out the colors of the room, picked out the furniture. This is a serious project. She's got to do, what, 80 hours, I think. Uh, and I think she probably, if she's not closing in on 80, she's probably over 80. Uh, but she just impressed me as an amazing young lady. Just so mature, so respectful so aware of her cause and advancing that cause and providing this place. It was such a wonderful idea. Uh, I'm going to ask her to speak in a minute, but another quick story. Uh, every year, the high schools all have uh, a community service scholarship award winners that comes from uh, town hall. We don't pick the winners. I don't want to have one family in love with me and, you know, 80 other families saying, why don't you pick my kid? So we don't pick them. We let the school pick them. 
So as I'm walking up to Colonia's graduation, I'm cutting across the track to the field, and I decided to open up the envelope and see who got my award. Molly Rubin got my award. And I didn't know this because I didn't pick her. But I just thought how absolutely ironic it was uh, that this young lady who I admire and have so much respect for actually got the mayor's uh, volunteer award. So that means she not only got involved with this, but to get that award, you've got to have a heck of a resume of community involvement. You've got to be involved in all kinds of school functions and outside of school functions. And I'm sure the fact that she was about to be a Girl Scout Gold Award uh, winner is one of the reasons why she got that award. So I've said enough. I'd like to now ask Molly if you'll come and say anything you want about this whole experience. Uh, the floor is all yours. Okay. And congratulations. So, you can take the mask off if you want. Yeah. You can? Okay. Hi, I'm Molly Rubin. Um, I'm currently in the works of earning my gold award, and I am the current president of the Gay Street Alliance at my high school, which is Colonia High School. Um, I would like to thank Mayor McCormick for his immense support uh, for me and my project and this event and future events. Um, I would also like to thank Miss uh, Shirley and Miss Daisha for their immense support and irre irreplaceable help for my project and, you know, being there for me when I needed help. Um, so there is going to be another event later this month for Pride Month in celebration with uh, LGBTQ plus teens. Uh, details for that will probably come later. Um, and I would like to thank everyone here who came here in support of LGBTQ Pride. Um, thank you all so much. All right. Now you see why we were so uh, anxious to work with this young lady. Let me now introduce a guy, uh, Anthony Wilkinson, who I met many years ago. Ironically, I met Anthony when he was a speaker at Colonia High School uh, for an assembly, and he was speaking about being bullied because he was gay growing up. And I'm telling you, I, I listened to every word. I have never in my life seen over a thousand high school kids sitting in an assembly in a gym without a peep, without anybody looking at their phone, without anybody talking to each other, without anybody distracting anybody else. They, they had over a thousand kids there and every single eye and ear was trained on Anthony as he told his story. And then we just got to know each other. It all went through Andy Nicola, who was our uh, court director and former deputy police chief, Phil Di Nicola's wife. She's the guidance counselor there. And uh, so we got to know Anthony very, very well. He was involved in all these shows in Broadway. We went to his shows and we, you know, became very good friends. And then knowing his theater background, when the time came to uh, open up our theater in Avenel, uh, Vito Simaluca one day says, I know who's going to run the theater. I said, who? And he said, Anthony Wilkinson, and it was the perfect choice. And he's been running that theater since it opened. And it's, other than the virus, it was, it was hitting on all cylinders last January, February, and March. Uh, we lost 14, 15 months, but we just had a terrific May. And he's got it primed um, to move forward. And it's now we're full capacity. And ironically, we have uh, this young lady behind me is the uh, star of the show this week and next week, which is Dixie's Tupperware Party. Uh, I'll let... Anthony explained that one to you. Um, but so, Anthony, please say a few words about uh, your involvement and everything, your, you know, your career. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what I first want to say is that I have always been very proud to work for Woodbridge Township, but I think today is probably the most proud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's really, uh, I don't think people understand the meaning that has come in the history of the pride flag. And as a kid who was bullied and did not have that acceptance, we have now gotten to a point in society where we are embracing so many different challenges and cultures and accepting. And it's that acceptance that will take us to the next level. And it is so needed right now. And seeing so many companies, corporations, businesses embracing Pride Month by the simple gesture of raising the flag and showing we care and is the simplest gesture, but it means so much to the people in my community. Um, so I really, really want to thank Mayor McCormick and Carol Ehrlich for setting the bar 
uh, here in New Jersey and being uh, this being the first year to raise the flag outside of town hall. And I can really seriously only hope that people see this and they follow these footsteps and hope to demonstrate the kind of equality that this town truly, truly has embraced. So that's how I'm at. That's next. So this week for Gay Pride, uh, we have my favorite show, Dixie's Tupperware Party with Ms. Dixie Longgate. Uh, it's a fabulous show. Um, actually, Dixie, I can't do it justice. I'm You're so sweet. Oh, it's so small. Hi, I'm, I'm Dixie Longgate, and first of all, I'm so happy to be back. I was here a couple of years ago uh, when the theater first opened, and he's like, "What are you doing?" Uh, I was like, "Drinking." He's like, "Come back." I said, "Okay." And so, uh, and so to be, uh, not only it's the first show back that I'm doing after 14 months because of COVID shutting down and all the theaters all over the world, but also to be able to sort of be here at the beginning of the LGBT Pride Month and um, and me such incredible people. Like, this is our future right here. That, I'm so overwhelmed and amazed by what you're doing, and I'm just so proud of you. I cannot wait to see what you do in the world. Um, but uh, but I'm very, very happy to be back in Woodbridge performing in the Memorial Center. And if you're around and you need some quality food storage solutions for your home and office, come laugh with me at Dixie's Tupper Party through the weekend. I get in it. But happy Pride, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for all you're doing. Thank you. You can't make this stuff up. Uh, I, well, you know, Molly mentioned Shirley Genty and DeAsia Smith. They are two people. Uh, Shirley runs our youth operation, youth centers. There's one in Colony. It's been there for several years next to Colony Middle School. We just opened up Highland Grove and Ford's right down the road from Ford's Middle School. And Acacia is going to be the place where kids are going from Woodbridge, Island and Avenel Middle Schools. And we're hoping there'll be a bus starting in September from each school that'll take kids right to there. And then they can get their parents to pick them up, you know, when they're done for the day. As I said, it's a place to recreate. There's a place to study. There's basketball courts. There's a soccer field. There's all kinds of great amenities. But I want to thank, Molly mentioned the two of you, but I want to thank you personally, uh, Shirley and DeAsia, for the job that you've done there. I also want to introduce our elected officials. We have our Council President, Brian Small. We have uh, Councilman Corey Spiller from the 3rd Ward Avenue in Port Reading. We have Councilman Kyle Anderson at large. We have Councilwoman Lizbeth DeJesus at large. Um, Greg. I'm going to get to Greg, yeah. Uh, Craig, anybody else council-wise? Uh, Beatrice Moskowitz, former Councilwoman from Metuchen. And now I'd like to ask, he's going to speak on behalf of all the, all the elected officials, uh, my good friend, our Assembly Speaker, Craig Coughlin. Thank you, Mayor. He's the only one that's that dressed for the occasion. I was going to say, I, I, I thought I was overdressed when I showed up. I to take the show. Anyway, but it, it's, uh, it's so nice to be here to everybody. It's, this is really a special day in Woodbridge, you know. Uh, it's the first event we've had. Uh, uh, Molly, thank you for your contributions. Anthony, I've gotten to know and, and know the kind of commitment he has to this community. And, and to hear you say how proud you are today makes us all feel really good about that. Uh, and for all of us, it's, it is, you know, it's time that we've done this. It, it, uh, let me congratulate the mayor and the council uh, for their continuing growth uh, in terms of recognizing the communities uh, within the community uh, and to reaching out today and, and having our first flag raising for the LGBTQ plus uh, community. It's appropriate that we do that. We have been about tearing down barriers. We've been about recognizing that that we need to grow and evolve, and we have done that. I was proud. I had the opportunity to vote in favor of gay marriage when I was in the assembly. We have done, I think, legislation that, uh, you know, uh, ha help continues the, the path of bringing uh, all of us uh, together uh, the way, uh, to, you know, we, we, that we had to do work to bring people's rights into into focus and then into equality um, is, is a little sad, but the truth of the matter is we're working towards that as to continue to do it. I love to think of myself as an ally in the, in the continued battle to, to make sure that this is right. So it's a special day in Woodbridge. It's a proud day for all of us. Uh, and I look, I'm, I'm delighted that we're here uh, as we celebrate uh, Pride Month and remember Stonewall. Uh, it, and and all of the things that led us to this day. It was it wasn't an, an easy, straight journey. Uh, it it was a journey that took twists and turns, um, and took a lot of courage, uh, and a lot of leadership. And so 
uh, congratulations again to everybody for being here, especially to the mayor and to the, the council for their leadership on this issue. Thanks to everybody who helps make Woodbridge just a, the best town around, if I can steal the line from a guy I like a lot. Um, and it's a pr I'm proud to be with you all today. Thanks very much. Thank you, Craig. I'm looking right at him, and I forgot to mention Councilman at large Greg Ficarra. And I should also mention former councilwoman and current chief of staff and head of redevelopment, uh, my best friend, closest confidant, and she worked so hard for this township, Carolyn Early. And with that, I'm going to ask Molly, you'll be the one to actually raise the flag if you don't mind.